Okay, so here's the uh, Energizer. Um, just been running a few tests. Uh, these are just Walmart garden batteries. Um, these are between, I'd say, 11 and 15 amp hour size uh, 12 volt garden starting batteries. <clears throat> this is resting at 12.71. Um, the output recovery battery is at 13.36 and I know that um, a lot of people have trouble just getting the output battery up high enough. Uh, they either don't have enough punch because they probably don't have um, enough length on the wire or maybe it's too long and they got the impedance up too high. I don't know but this is going to push it to uh, about 15 and a half. Um, fairly quick. I've already been running this a little bit so it'll get up there a little bit quicker but I just want to show you that running on one of these 12 volt batteries through this 7 um, power winding coil 130 feet per uh, winding uh, per wire uh, can easily push this over 15 volts to 15 and a half and if I kept letting it go it would probably, probably get it up close to 16 but you don't want that because you're going to overcharge it but uh, and I checked the uh, cycles per second, and it was about 88, 89 times 60 divided by 21 magnets means this is running at about 250 RPM. Uh, and actually, I don't know what happened, but I tightened this coil down because we didn't have that for the demo video. I tightened it down. Something happened, and suddenly it just jumped up about 30% in RPM and pushed the output battery way higher, uh, just sped right up. So I just want to show you that uh, this is 12.72 volts. We'll push this output battery to uh, over 15 uh, easily. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to show you that the transistors, um, we can see that the desk temperature is about 79. Resistors are the same. And after it runs for a little bit, um, it's only going to go up to about 82 degrees. So three degrees above room temperature running in attraction mode means you do not need the heat sinks obviously so anyway we'll just take it for a little spin here put that down so you can see that in the sunlight better We're up to uh, 47, 50 cycles a second. The output battery is It's actually not running as fast as it was just a minute ago, but um, seventy-nine degrees, and put it right on that transistor. Eighty. It'll get up to about eighty-two, and then it'll just stop there. I just spun the wheel a little bit faster. I might need to adjust the bearings how it's set up but you can see that thing is kicking into high gear I just spun it a little bit quicker so there is some resistance issues with the bearings so I gotta I gotta get that worked out so it can speed up to that by itself but uh, see it's running at 12.36 input battery See that output battery is at 15.45. You're climbing. So this battery is done. I mean, when it gets up here and it stays there for a little while, probably about 15.2 or 15.3 is really about the highest that you want to push these without overcharging them. Um, these things are quite a few years old. I have actually brought these down to zero volts and shorted them because they wouldn't even hold a charge. And uh, I was using the 2A12 uh, to charge, put it through a cycle on the uh, Western Mountain Radio um, load tester uh, to draw it down. Then I charge it up, and so I rejuvenated them pretty good. But um, for something that I brought down to zero volts, shorted it out, and then rejuvenated it, it's pretty incredible. This can get 
up to uh, you know better than new uh, capacity. Well, it might actually be about 90% or so. I still have to put it through some cycles, but you can see 15.6 almost, and uh, pretty easy. So you can see the RPM. 89, so 89 cycles a second times 60 seconds in a minute. Then you divide it by 21 magnets on the wheel. That'll equal about um, 250 RPM. And when you take the output here and you actually put it through a capacitive discharge, um, uh, circuit, um, you get even more charge quicker for the same or less input. 15.63. See, so this thing, this absolutely has no problem pushing this battery. I mean, look at that, 15.63. And it's not at that voltage because it's meeting a lot of uh, resistance from sulfation and stuff. Um, I've already dropped that stuff out, so that's actually where the battery is at. So I'm probably going to go ahead and stop that, but uh, it's been running for a little bit. Put my finger on the bottom of the clay. It just feels cool. So look at that. eighty one degrees eighty eighty one so seventy nine is room temp is temperature of the desk eighty one so we're looking at one to two degrees if even that is about as hot as those transistors get I mean, that's pretty phenomenal you can't do that in repulsion mode you gotta have it running in attraction mode to do that and in attraction mode you'll get more mechanical work for less input and you get higher electrical recovery. So if you already have a Bedini SG running in whatever variation, you got to get the Bedini SG, the complete beginner's handbook, learn about the attraction mode, run it in that because you can do it with all the parts you already have. And you'll get um, even better efficiencies. Show that, 12.34. It's getting close to 15.7. So if you can't get your output uh, to push the battery up over like 13 something, which I see a lot of people have that issue, make it seven power windings, 130 feet long of 20 gauge wire and a single eighth wire, which will be 23 gauge for the trigger wire and use the whole seven transistor uh, setup. And in the Bedini SG, the complete intermediate handbook, that'll show you John's method of actually matching the transistors so that they're pretty much all synchronized in the uh, in how they're working. Things going pretty fast. 250 RPM is pretty good for for this. I haven't measured the uh, input draw or anything like that. I haven't got any efficiency tests. I'm just kind of showing some general comparisons of what's going on here. So anyway, I just wanted to show you real quick the waveform. I had it on the trigger, so you're kind of looking at it upside down, but here's the uh, collector there. Uh, grounded to primary, then on the collector. Um, So you can see the frequency is going between 87 and 91 or so. Uh, there's the input battery. Look at that, transistor is cooling, cooled down. Seventy-seven. So eighty. Eighty-one. 
Push it to 15.68. It was going to 7 and then 8 dropped a little bit. It may be hitting a little bit of sulfation there that is breaking apart. And then the impedance um, drops and the voltage will drop a little bit. But pretty much this battery really is there. When it settles, it'll be in high in high 12s. If I let it sit overnight, it'll probably be like 12.8, 12.9, something like that. It's going a lot faster than what the what it looks like in the film. Three degrees above room temperature running in attraction mode means you do not need the heat sinks obviously. So anyway we'll just take it for a little spin here. Put that down so you can see that in the sunlight better. up to uh, 47 50 cycles a second the output battery is 15.17 it's actually not running as fast as it was just a minute ago but um Nine degrees and put it right on that transistor 80 it'll get up to about 82 and then I'll just stop there I just spun the wheel a little bit faster I might need to adjust the bearings how it's set up but you can see that thing is kicking in the high gear I just spun it a little bit quicker the rpm uh, and actually I don't know what happened but I tightened this coil down because we didn't have that for the demo video I tightened it down something happened and suddenly it just jumped up about 30 percent in RPM and pushed the output battery way higher uh, just sped right up so I just want to show you that uh, this is 12.72 volts we'll push this output battery to uh, over 15 uh, easily okay um, also, I'm going to show you that the transistors, um, we can see that the desk temperature is about 79. Resistors are the same, and after it runs for a little bit, um, it's only going to go up to about 82 degrees. So... Okay, so here's the uh, Energizer. Um, just been running a few tests. Uh, these are just Walmart garden batteries. Um, these are between, I'd say, 11 and 15 amp hour size uh, 12 volt garden starting batteries. <clears throat> this is resting at 12.71. Um, the output recovery battery is at 13.36. And I know that um, a lot of people have trouble just getting the output battery up high enough. Uh, they either don't have enough punch because they probably don't have um, enough length on the wire or maybe it's too long and they got the impedance up too high I don't know but this is going to push it to uh, about 15 and a half um, 
fairly quick. I've already been running this a little bit, so it'll get up there a little bit quicker. But I just want to show you that running on one of these 12 volt batteries through this seven um, power winding coil, 130 feet per uh, winding uh, per wire, uh, can easily push this over 15 volts to 15 and a half. And if I kept letting it go, it'd probably probably get it up close to 16. But you don't want that because you're going to overcharge it. But uh, and I checked the uh, cycles per second, and it was about 88, 89 times 60 divided by 21 magnets means this is running at about 250.